certainly the West Indies will be hoping that different things come their way in uh, the longer format of the game. It's the first test of the series between the West Indies and South Africa. Yeah, we, we're going to bet first today. Um, obviously, there's a lot of weather around, but the wicket looks uh, pretty dry, and I think it's probably going to get dry and dry throughout the test. Yeah, I'm very disappointed, to be honest with you. Um, it's a sad task to lose on this wicket. Um, the wicket seems a bit dry, you know, regardless of the, the rain that has been falling. So, you know, we're in the field, but having said that, um, you know, we're trying, you know, do the basic things right and see whatever start we can get and make, to make sure it's a good one. Spinner, here's the first ball of the first test. Oh. Looks as if it's just about sprinkling now. The umpire is unmoved and the cloud is high, so I'm pretty sure even if we do have rain, it's going to be of the very light stuff. So the first runs of the test match played off the hip by Peterson. A few highlights so far in the 21 overs, as you would come to expect four boundaries, one of them pulled by Smith. Peterson off the outside edge, went for a wide one and was uh, fortunate it didn't go to hand. They've had a little bit of fortune as well, so it's not been plain sailing. Oh, an interesting pitch because Ben came on and found turn immediately, as we suspected there would be. And with the moisture around, there was a little bit of seam too. It was the odd repost from the batsman. But all in all, it's been a, an intense battle. We make that 20. He's got 20, rather, from 61 balls. Good start, good start, Jenny. His father was an off-spinner. He was telling me this morning his brother Ray Casimir, who's played uh, for the West Indies in the 19s and a couple of first-class matches, a left-arm orthodox. This is nicely played, nicely timed. Could make it. Nicely pulled back. Doesn't really seem too unnerved by the turn that Ben is getting. Hit up there should have him playing forward, should have him doing more of that. Peel. Oh, now, has that struck him on the boot or has that hit the bat? That's a pretty legitimate appeal. And Chris Gale has asked for a review well, before that hit the boot and we can conclusively say no yeah. got him first test match wicket for Shane Schillingford he kisses his badge Dwayne Bravo's taken the catch and Graham Smith goes what a proud moment for this young man from Dominica Check which time Court slip. Suleiman Ben gets his first wicket of this match, and South Africa in trouble. Come in. Given a leg before, Shilling for the shot again. Now, will they question this one? Peterson looks up. Callis and Peterson consult. They have 15 seconds to make the decision. There are... Was, uh, well, that's fine. It's a legal delivery. From what I heard, it sounded like he, he got an inside edge. But uh, obviously, the West Indies don't think so. And we're about to find out. No, he doesn't. Now, what's Hawkeye going to show us? Yeah, I think if he had got an inside edge, he wouldn't have had to consult. Impact on field. He's given him out. So three down then. West Indies spinners are doing the job here. What a session of cricket we've had. In the word of Geoffrey Dujon, a truncated day, but an intriguing one. Steve Davis had a reading of his light meter. That's where the bowling is coming from, of course. The northern end, the media end. That was a previous reading. It's over eight on that uh, thing. Now it's down to six. The decision is that it's uh, got dark enough that they can't continue play 
And the West Indies have had a very good session there. Opening partnership between Smith and Peterson of 55. And since then, domination by the West Indies spinners. Shane Shillingford on debut. The off spinner has taken a couple of wickets. They both openers caught at slip and then leg before on the umpire's review system. Called for by the bats. Down towards long off, fielder is out there and takes a very, very good catch. Excellent catch by Pascal, finishes off the innings. 352 all out, Voucher goes, Desobe remains, not out three. And an excellent catch by Pascal right on the ropes, gives Bravo the wicket and therefore all ten wickets don't fall to spinners. We were looking up all those records a while ago but Bravo finishes off and uh, that is going to be the close of play as well this is a wicket of Paul Harris He's putting a wide one to cover Jack Callis looked very much in control A.B. De Villiers came and joined him good use of his feet kept the bowlers off balance and then Jack Callis walked across his stumps to one that spun into him and was adjudged late before. Amy De Villiers kept going, beautiful footwork. And joined by Ashwell Prince, who did his bit as well. Not as aggressive, but accumulated runs. And this was the reviewed catch at the wicket of Amy De Villiers, which was turned down. De Villiers kept going. Anything Lucy put away quite effectively, as did Ashwell Prince, who got into the act as well. And then there was this contested edge, or was it? Steve Davis thought it wasn't. And Prince stayed and kept going. That's a 50 for De Villiers, maybe not in the most authoritative fashion, but it's a well-played half-century nevertheless for one of the key men in the South African batting lineup. And that's a 50 now for Ashwell Prince. These little milestones very important, recognized by all and sundry in South African colors and indeed by those who appreciate the effort overall. 208 for five. Ava de Villiers always keen to use his feet, finding the gap for a boundary immediately after lunch. There's always still an encouragement for the bowlers, but de Villiers getting to the half century. Ashwell Prince just behind him and raising the bat to acknowledge the landmark. Going over the top for the one bounce four to wide long on. And then a very soft dismissal, the very first delivery bowled by Gale. Why didn't he bowl earlier, the West Indians would have been saying. And then De Villiers departing to Suleiman Ben. Outside edge into Ramdin's gloves. Boucher's favorite shot, the pull. And Adil Stain winding up and carting the big six. A couple of narrow escapes for Stain in the over from Rampole. One, Dinesh Ramdin might have reacted a bit sharper, the keeper. And no problems with this poor delivery down the leg side. Yeah. Chandra Paul had to scramble the save for the single. But that's enough to get Boucher to the half century, which will give him some special satisfaction. Took the fact that he was left out of the T20s and the one day as pretty badly. Uh, by all accounts and uh, this uh, will make him feel very very good to be back in the setup and contributing in a very significant way so highlights uh, of the recent session voucher driving down the ground and stain this was the partnership these two put on stain uh, had a little bit of luck from uh, the outside edge from time to time but when he did choose to strike it he struck it pretty and then a huge six immediately after that. That's all in the same over. That went a long way. They took a while to uh, actually find the ball. 
Boucher still looking to steal singles and uh, had the stumps been hit a bit more often and then Stone got nowhere near that one. I don't know. <laughs> we all know what he was trying to do, but he was so far from hitting it. Boucher went on to his half century and uh, became the second highest wicket keeper in terms of going past 50 in a career. And then uh, Moorcock didn't really look comfortable. Boucher made the most of the situation with fielders in towards the end of the over. Albeit on this occasion, long on and long off were in position. And he still managed to get it for four, but not this time. Finally, he goes. So there's the South African card, 352. 68, 57, 69, 39. Important uh, innings uh, there. So let's have a look at the wickets he took. This was last night with... Amla pushing a little bit far forward. This was this morning, the night watchman, maybe not the greatest shot in the world. Then the important wicket of de Villiers, who was building uh, such a good partnership. Stain having a slog, and Morkel playing a shot that he doesn't really play all that well. I would like to have seen him play a bit straighter. But five wickets for Suleiman Ben, yet again, in a very short career. That's the uh, best performance against South Africa, 5 for 120, and 5 for 155 against Australia, and uh, 4 for 31 against England. So he's probably a very tired man, 40-odd overs in, uh, in this test match in not, uh, not, not a whole bunch of time, you know. It's, it's all, all within a day and a little bit he's bowled those overs. So well done, young man. That should be it. Looped up, simple catch, and uh, the innings is over. Typifying the senselessness of a West Indies cricket on uh, this Saturday afternoon. Poor shot, simple dismissal, and uh, the South Africans have a lead of 250. They are not enforcing the follow-on based on the signal there from Graham Smith. He's running off the field. So clearly South Africa, based on what we've seen, will bat again, building on this advantage of 250. That he had to play at, generous edge, and uh, well taken. Facing Morkel. <laughs> Big appeal for a catch of the wicket, not out, says Davis. Now will they ask for the referral? It seems to have hit. That is a deceptive angle for me. This is probably the best angle with the gloves out of the way there. So for me from and the bat out of there, it seems as though it's hit brush the near the elbow, upper from the elbow. First for Travis Dolan, got a good ball, probably the only good ball to dismiss a batsman. Short, bounced and straightened, he had to play. And Graham Smith taking a very good catch at first slip. And it was Brendan Nash. The jury is still out on this one, whether it hit his elbow. First decision was not out. Graham Smith asked for a view. It was umpire's decision was overturned and he was given out. And Chris Gale, first ball after the first water cut, played across a delivery that was going across him, only got a bottom edge onto his stumps. drive down the ground and in fact they won't go for a single even though the ball is bobbled we're playing in fact here for the Vivian Richards Sir Vivian Richards trophy between uh, the West Indies and England and uh, South Africa South Africa have the advantage at lunch on the third day there's 352 in their first innings the West Indies 65 for three as he steered towards third man coming back for a second and at that point, South Africa knew that they were in with a good chance. Shivna Ryan Chanderpaul, short delivery, just fended it off. And Mark Boucher did the rest. Surprised him, it was, he was focusing outside his off stump, pitching the ball up, and this one got a little bit of extra bounce. And then it was Dwayne Bravo. Took his eye off a delivery he thought would bounce. Nothing had bounced before that. And caught in no man's land, just gloved it to Boucher. Next to go was Narsing Dionarain, 
inexplicably leaving a delivery that pitched that was coming into his off stump and that was the end of the resistance between himself and Shandor Paul and then beaten totally for pace debutant Shane Schillingford no question that he was out and we can see that ball reversing in and would have smacked the off stump that's nicely driven and should get to the boundary and it does how close is that how close is it they have one left and they're gonna use it that will get away to the boundary we'll keep rounding on strike he's got that one away wide long half volley and rounding just able to give the few fans here something to cheer about four more didn't think of looking for the single to get the strike at the start of another over it's 96 for nine prince and de villiers just a couple there demonstrated precisely what what is required and and the partnership before lunch um as the hundred comes up so that'll bring a cheer and a hoot and a holler for a little while it's just been a procession look how easy the runs are coming now yes there's been a change of bowling but playing with a straight bat timing it well that should be it looped up simple catch and uh, the innings is over typifying the senselessness of a West Indies cricket on uh, this Saturday afternoon. They move across, expose the stumps, and Dale Stain chose the off stump. Ravi Rampal, a bit of the same. And at this point, it was a matter of time. And last man to go, Neilan Pascal, safely taken by Peterson and the West Indian innings came to an end 102 where we're delivering down the leg side the keeper first delivery short and pulled away for four bad delivery to start off with no Now we're putting a contest on here. Now, what are these people watching? The spectators have turned their back on West Indies cricket. In uh, the final session, difficult chance put down uh, by uh, Dwayne Bravo. Finding the gap. No third man in place at that time. But Peterson taking a liking to Solomon Ben. The same over hoisting him for six. Beautifully timed. Then another boundary. 14 runs off uh, that over of uh, the bat of Alvaro Peterson. But then, and uh, cricket delivery. He deliberated for some time that Peterson uh, talking with uh, Graham Smith as well after being given out. But decided not to challenge it in the end. At the other end, Graham Smith going along well. Hamla dismissed cheaply in the first innings of the mark at four. Smith. Picking up another boundary through his favorite onside. But then Amla, a double failure. Good low catch by Dion Ryan at cover off Schillingford. Runs have dried up in this test match. But Jacques Callis, always massively impressive. Smith quietly reaching his half century. Very few spectators to applaud the effort. That didn't bother him at all. Just kept moving along putting South Africa in an almost impregnable position by the end of the day. Carl is getting a bit adventurous with a number of reverse sweeps. And 
the Elon Pascal spring down leg side. Beautiful straight drive, helping him along to 40. By the time light was offered just minutes before the schedule to close. South Africa with a lead of 405. Smith 21 runs away from 100. Callis 10 away from 50. The only question really be will be whether or not they'll declare at lunch, if they'll bat into the afternoon, if they'll want to lead a 450, 500. Play the West Indies completely out of the match. Yeah, and, um, I think as a team, I think we're just happy that we uh, were able to get through a day today. It was again very hot and uh, I think uh, we batted superbly yesterday and then followed up with good bowling today. You were a bit behind Mornay until lunchtime. It looked like he was the man for the five foot, but you came out and everything went beautifully after lunch. Yeah, I think, look, Mornay bowled fantastically well. Uh, you know, he set the standard this morning. He took three early wickets for us and he really set the standard for what was to come. Um, once the ball started reverse swinging, then uh, we seemed to come back into the game myself and, you know, the low skiddy bowlers. So uh, I thought he bowled fantastically. South Africa win by 163 runs. They take the lead in the series 1-0 with about nine minutes left on the fourth day. And Pascal rather becoming over ambitious. 293 all out the West Indies. The victory by South Africa, 163 runs. Rampol is left 18 not out. Stain finishes with three wickets to go with his five in the first innings. A thoroughly deserved victory for South Africa. There were 105, 108 for five at one stage on the second day, but they recovered from that. They reached 352, then rolled the West Indies for 102. They had the opportunity to enforce the follow on. They didn't. Carried on and today declared at 206 for four and now pulled the West Indies out for 293. Victory by 163, 163 runs. South Africa have taken a 1-0 lead in their test series against the West Indies after a dominant display in Trinidad. The host needed 457 for victory and that looked even more unlikely after losing their opening wicket in just the second over. But his captain Chris Gow showed some resistance. He was the only batsman to top 50. However, his dismissal ended any hope of victory. Oh, finger goes out straight away. Successful Markle. Dal Steyn picked up three wickets to make it eight for the match to seal a comprehensive win late on day four. All over. South Africa win by 163 runs. West Indies. Dwayne Bravo, Emolton. After a shaky start, but positive. Narsin Dionarindo fell to Dale Steyn. Bravo continued. Played some very pleasant shots. Went over the top a couple of times. It's really looking good. And then clipped one to a short mid wicket. Ashwell Prince took the catch. And that was the end of Bravo. Dinesh Ramdin drove one straight into short cover and gave. Don Wabo Sosobi, his first wicket in Test cricket. Suleiman Ben came to the wicket and put up stern resistance himself and Shane Shillingford. Putting on 65 with some genuine stroke play. Ben particularly harsh on Jack Callis, hitting for consecutive boundaries. There's the second. And if that wasn't enough, there's the third. Chillingford got into the act and Callis was in for a bit more of a hammering. And then Suleiman Ben succumbed to Alvaro. 42. Chillingford continued. And then he fell, went to the well one time too many. And Peterson, who just got a wicket, took a catch. Ravi Rampal came to the wicket and hit a few thumping shots. Joined by Pascal. 
And then finally, as the new ball was taken, Pascal dragged one on and the test match was over. So there's the match summary. First day, because of rain, only 34 overs bowled. And South Africa, that said, 70 for three. They lost two wickets uh, early on the second day, but then recovered and reached 352. Sulon Ben, five for 120. West Indies, big collapse, 102, their lowest total ever in test cricket against uh, South Africa. Stain, five for 29, four wickets as well for Morkel. Then South Africa batting on 206 for four declared. Smith looking for 100, but being bowled around his legs by Ben for 90. Ben following his first innings, five wickets for three for 74. And the West Indies were not being able to see out the day, in fact, being beaten in the last half an hour, which was claimed by the South African captain, Graham Smith, to see if he could finish a match. And he did, with about nine minutes remaining on the clock. Top score for the West Indies captain, Chris Gale, 73. Stain finished off the match with a wicket of Pascal, 3 for 65. And the West Indies only got up to 293 because of the last three wickets, which added 99. South Africa win by 163 runs. They lead the three-match series 1-0. The next test starts at Warner Park in St. Kitts on Friday.